Hello. Happy early Sunday morning. I'm sorry, I got my little, you see I got my coffee, so, hey, I might have about 20 videos today, so, so, uh, just be cautious, be aware, <laughs> be cautious because I might talk your ear off. No, but just, just be aware. And then again, I could just have one video. You never know. This video might be an hour long, though. No, okay, let me get my little sip. You see, I already had some little coffee because I'm already talking and acting silly. Let me let me just get a little another hint of it. And I like my coffee piping hot, you know, because uh, I, I need the coffee to be flowing through quickly. You know, I don't need to be sipping on no cold. I don't like cold coffee. So I, I like the hotness because it, it would get through your veins quick. You know, it's like... Uh, taking the powder aspirin versus a, a chewable aspirin. You know, you chew it up. You got to. It's gonna take some time to go through the system and and do what it need to do. You take a powder aspirin. It's getting straight to the point quickly. So the hot coffee straight to the point quickly, as you can tell. Okay, so this video, I know I did a little sibly sip. You know, some people get irritated by certain uh, little perks people have. You know, like if you clench your teeth on a fork or something like that, but, you know, it irks people's nerves. And then if you sip coffee or, or sip whatever, you know, you make that slurpy sound, people don't like that. See, you see the coffee already got me talking crazy. It's like when I had that coffee, it's like I find so many uh, things in my files up here in this, in this little noggin right here. I find so many files, you know, like when I don't have the coffee, well, I can't say that because I'm hyper anyway, but it's like uh the coffee makes me find things quicker <laughs> up in here. You know, oh, okay, this file was back in back in 1977. Okay, let me pull that out. You know, but other than that, I would stay like uh, with my regular hyperness. I probably would stay. I I'd probably be jumping around, but uh, but coffee makes me jump or uh, run around. <laughs> As you can tell, you see, I can't even put it down. And, and all it takes is one cup of coffee, not even one, a half a cup. And, and I'm off to the races. They need to put me on the track with the horses. I'm, I'm going to beat them all. Matter of fact, let, let me be the jockey. Of course, I have to be the jockey because uh, I can't run in the race with a horse. Um, but yeah, let me be the jockey and we're we going to win this race. We're definitely going to win. All right, let me, let me, before I be sitting up here just talking crazy with the coffee. Okay, so this video is about change. Now, the things I'm going to say, uh, some people might not like, but I have to say it. Okay, change. And the first thing is, we as humans, we have control over certain certain things, but we tend to think that we have control over everything, which we don't. We are just a vessel, and I have stated this before on other videos. We are just a vessel. We do have freedom to choose, you know, but we either a vessel for good or bad. Okay, so this video is not about that. It's about change. And change, uh, the reason why I was saying about humans is because uh, we tend to want to uh, take credit for a lot of things. Well, I'm here to tell you that we can't take credit for it, for uh, things. Um well, you know, not all things. So when it comes to change, we can't change ourselves. Uh, we might think that we can, but we can't. All we can do is help. So what I mean by that is that we have to go to the Lord and ask him to change. And our participation in, the, in this is we have to go along with what he's, what he's trying to do. So say, for instance, um, you don't want to smoke anymore and you go to the, to the Lord and say, uh, will you help me not to smoke? OK, so you you already did your part and went to the father. Well, actually, that's not your part, but I mean, well, you know what I mean? You went to the father. You, you made the. the uh, you initiated the, the situation. So you went to the father and that's not the word I want to you. But you went to the father and you um you asked him you you know to help you with your cigarette smoking. Okay, so so he's gonna do his part and your part with that would be to to say no. You know, if 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 someone come around you and 
um, because he, the, the Lord probably would, I'm just giving, this is just an example. The Lord would probably take that urge from you, but then you're going to have the enemy coming around, which is, you know, you know who the enemy of the world is. You would have him coming around and somebody's going to say, here, here's a cigarette. And your job is to say no. But if you say yes, then that means that you're fighting against what God is trying to do. God wants you to say no, but the enemy wants you to say yes. And he's going to, the enemy, whenever you try to do good or to do right or whatever the case is, the enemy always going to present himself to you, you know, to try to make you think otherwise. And the same thing happened in the garden, the, you know, in the garden of Eden. So, um, they wanted to do one thing, but he came and whispered something else in the ear. So, which brings me to the point about change again. Change um, is we have to we have to go to the Lord and ask him for the change. <clears throat> so, uh, so my point with the change situation is this: in the world, we have a lot of people. Uh, let me see how to put this. There's a lot of people out in the world that sometimes are like the escape goat. So a lot of people tend to go to the escape goat. And I'm not blaming the people for, uh, okay, I'm going to have to give you an example before I start rambling on about things. <clears throat> Let's take uh, Caitlin Clark. We're just going to use her. Um, and you're probably saying, did that girl talk a lot about Kayla Clark and Lisa Reese? I mean, Angel Reese and um, and this and that. But but again, because I know that name is out there. But just just, just hear me out. Because um, I it's not like I have a favor with them or anything like that because I, I really don't. Um, so look how she, look, look how Caitlin and Angel uh, came into the league. They were playing um, the college ball. They was in the tournament. And soon after the tournament was over, they got drafted. Soon as they got drafted, they started playing. I mean, it was like back to back. And so so they didn't really have time to breathe, to think about anything. So everything was rushed at them. And then all of a sudden, here's the fame. You know, so now they got they got Angel um, modeling, doing di different things. They got them both in commercials. Angel and Caitlin in commercials. Uh, they got them. They just got them doing so much. They haven't had no time off. So if you can imagine what they went through before they made it, uh, before they came into the spotlight like this, and um, so if you understand what they went through, um, and then uh, physically, mentally, and emotionally, and then to come into this limelight. And had to deal with that and people and, you know, people criticizing you, people uh, having, um, throwing uh, d death uh, threats at you, you know, so it's it's a lot to in, to take in. And then also um, for them uh, wanting Caitlin to go into the, uh, to the Olympics, to play in the Olympics. And you got to think like, she she's human. You know, I mean, she's only one person and you just want to run her nonstop. You know, I'm, I'm glad that the Laura stepped in. I mean, I, I don't I don't know uh, if she's in the Olympic thing or not, but you have to understand she's human. Don't you think that she needs a rest? And then when she doesn't perform good, her or Angel, which, you know, they, they're doing pretty well for themselves. You, you want to criticize them, say that they're, they're tired or they this, they mentally want. You said Caitlin was tired when she didn't produce what you wanted her to produce. You said Angel was uh, mentally, uh, something was going on her mentally, you know, when she didn't do or say some uh, certain things you wanted her to say. So it's like, who do y'all want these people to be? You want them to be superheroes or something like that? So... So I was glad that the Laura stepped in and said, no, she don't need to go to the Olympics. You know, let her rest. You know, she haven't had time to breathe, to understand where she's at. And so that's the way that the world, the world likes you like that. You know, um, they, they don't want you to stop and think about what's going on. Matter of fact, it's the enemy. He doesn't want you to stop and think about who you are, what's going on. And he want to keep you running ragged. And so that brings me to my situation, my daughter's situation, 
and a lot of people out here in the world who give 110% and people, and again, I'm not faulting people because if you have a sure thing, yeah, you want to keep going to that sure thing, you know, because you can depend on that sure thing. You know that sure thing is going to take care of everything. But that's where the world is at fault. Again, I know one more moment I said there, and I don't, I don't blame them because, you know, if you know you have something that's good, you you want to tend to keep using it. But you have to understand that that's where the fault come in at because you have millions and millions of people in the world that also can do these things. But you have to seek out and see who the other people are. You can't keep using that one person and thinking that uh, that they the only like they are the savior or something like that. You know, I'm not saying this the savior like the savior. But I'm just saying you think they can always rescue out of, of a situation. But what happens when you don't have that person anymore? You have to look anyway, right? You're going to have to look and find somebody else to replace them. So, uh, but the world, again, they tend to use that one person up. And, um, and, and you don't understand what that one person is going through. You know, mentally, physically, emotionally, maybe financially too, spiritually. You know, again, that's like the, the enemy doesn't want whoever this one person is to find out who they really are because he knows that they can do damage in the world, you know. So, a little coffee. So, we have to understand that we need to give people a time to breathe. We need to start either doing things on our own or finding someone else who can uh, to help out in whatever situation it is, you know, um, because the world doesn't see that once that person is gone, um, it's like the whole world turns upside down, you know. Uh, so. Um, so, yeah, so we we have to we have to. Um, yeah, we have to, we really have to, I'm trying to think the right word. We uh, have to do better with that, you know, quit using uh, people and making them feel, well, we, people don't, well, I can't say I feel like a slave because I like, I like helping people, but when you have to help like a million and one people, it, it does get tiring sometimes, you know, and the, the person that's asking you to do things, they might not know that you're helping 20 other people. You know, they might just think that you're helping that, them, but you have to understand that uh, uh, if you do happen to see that, yeah, this person is using that person, that person is using that person. Yeah, so you have to have compassion. I think that's the word I was trying to use before. You have to have compassion and understand, well, let me give that person a break, you know. Uh, let me let me find some someone else. You know that way you can you can have this 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 um, this person that's doing everything, and then you can have somebody else that can do something else. You know you might have somebody find somebody else who can do something better. You know so you have to look around and not always depend on that one. And which bring me to another point of one of the basketball coaches, uh, the South Carolina coach, Don, I think that's what her name is. Uh, I like how she did her, her, her lineup, her, her team. She used different players. She didn't just focus on one person. She used a lot of different players. And, and, and that was kind of strange because normally when I watch any kind of sports, it's always that one certain person that they speak about. Uh, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant. LeBron James, Magic Johnson, you know, I'm just throwing names out there. So there's plenty of other people. Um, and the same with like uh, the WNBA, the tennis, you always hear certain names, Serena, Venus, uh, Coco, you know, uh, Chris Everett Lloyd, Martina, you know, Gabrielle Sabatini. I mean, it's just different name. Pete Sampas, you know, it's just, it's, I can go on and on, but it's, you always hear that one person name, Tiger Woods, you know, Dustin Johnson, uh, Roy, uh, I forgot Roy, Dad, I'm sorry, Roy, you know, the, the golfer, I'm sorry, Roy, I forgot your, your last name. But anyway, you get the point. It's always that one person. 
that we focus on in the world and we think they're extraordinary. No, we got a lot of extraordinary people out here in the world. We just have to look around and find them, you know. So uh, now for the people who are out there giving a 110 percent, we have to what we are are like, yes, people. Would you help me? Yes, I will. Would you help me do this? Yes, I will. Can you go here? Yes, I can. You know, we're like, yes, people. When And it's hard for us to say no. So that's where we have to go to the Lord and say, Lord, I can't, I can't deal with this type of situation anymore, you know, or I mean, I can deal with it, but I'm just drained. I am so drained. So can you help me? Will you help me? And, and he definitely will help you. He's going to help you to say no. Um, he's going to, so when someone asks you, can, can you do this? You're going to have to, you got to do your part and say, no, no, I can't do it this time. Some people might react to you in a strange way, or some people might even assist, insist like, oh, oh you know, they, some people might have attitude. Oh, you can't. And then all you have to say is, no, I can't. You don't have to go all around about it, you know, have a, a circular conversation about it, you know, like a back and forth. Just say no and walk away, you know, because at the end of the day, we only have one life to live. Everybody else is living a life while you're running around trying to take care of everything and, and you can't even deal with your own self. And not only that is that not only is it draining, but it messes with your, your mental state, your physical state, your health state. I mean, it could throw your whole body off trying to be a superhero out here. You know, and again, and we do have those, a lot of us have, the, everyone has that superhero quality. But some people just tend not to use it. But, um, so again, for the ones who are doing 110%, just go to the Lord and, and and ask him to help and do your part and step back and say no. Yeah, it's going to be hurting because you're used to saying yes. And the reason why I'm saying these things is because he has he has done that for me. He has told me, and, and, and it's simple, Lisa, you're, you're, you're draining yourself. You know, all you have to do is say no. Just stand up for yourself and say no. You know, yeah, people are going to say this and do this and do that. But I, I, I'm in control of things, you know. Uh, they might not like what you say or do, but you have to honor me and just say no. So, and he's going to take care of everything. He's going to take care of the people who has a problem with you saying no. Um, he's he's going to deal with everything. He's going to be. And so once you do that, you start to breathe again. You know, you start to have that peace. You start to laugh again. You start to have that energy so, again, the reason why, like I was saying, the reason why I'm coming on here saying is because that's what he had to take me through. Because I, I, I am that yes person. And, again, I don't mind helping people. Um, but you do have to realize I am only one person. My daughter is only one person. Uh, anybody else in my family that does that, they're only one person. Anybody else out in the world, they are only one person. So... Just remember that uh, we all need to help one another. Not just this, not just that one person need to help everybody, but we all need to help one another. And the only way we're going to get the proper help and everything that we need is from the Lord. He's the only one that, that can really guide us all to helping one another and being the people that he called us to be. So uh, it all starts from the Lord. You know, we go to him. He he is our source for everything. He's our savior. He will save us from the hard times. You know, and then that's another thing too. We try to take care of things and do things on our own, thinking we're the ones that gotta uh, go out here and change things. You know, no, he's the one that changes things. We're just a vessel to do that changing, but he's the one that's gonna change it. You know, it's you know, it's like a, well, I, I can't think of an example just yet, but. But yeah, we're just a vessel, you know, so um, we don't have to handle all of these things. We give it all to the Lord and our life would be so much better. But we have to go to him for the help. He is our doctor. He's our everything, our refuge, our strength, 
or energy, you know, or peace or joy or happiness or freedom. You know, um, he's our king or Lord or say, I'm saver, I know I probably said that, or the Messiah. I mean, he's everything to us. So now, now with me saying all of that, now he is the one that can take on the whole world. So now if you, if you need something, go to him. I'm not glad I was, you know, mentioning all the things about him because he is the superhero of our world. He's more than that. Not, not just this world, but uh, the heavens and, and everything. So if, if you want somebody to, um, to, uh, be that one true person that you go to, that's going to take care of everything. He's the one, not me, not that person, not that person, not my daughter, but, but he is. He's the one that's going to take care of everything. He is our true superhero. So, um, so again, yeah, you know, I had coffee, so it's 20 minutes long. Uh, this video it is, this, this video is 20 minutes long. Yeah, I kind of have my words a little backwards, but, um, happy Sunday and thank you for listening and watching. And hopefully you go out there and, um, pick other people to do things, you know, and just don't rely on that one person because again, when, when that one person is gone, um, you got problems, but if if we rely on Jesus to be the one that we count on, we won't have any problems. All right, so thank you for listening and watching, and peace out and goodbye.